The year is 1990, and Lieutenant Mike Harrigan is about to make an important discovery. Here he is, looking for revenge deep inside the Predator's lair. What he doesn't realize is that he's about to blow our minds by connecting two of the greatest science fiction films of all time. See that? It's an alien skull. Which means that at some point, the Predators went head-to-head -head with the Xenomorphs. You have to understand, this was nearly two dozen years ago. Long before Hollywood muddied the lore with two mediocre Alien vs. Predator movies, the very idea that these two franchises could secretly be connected was more than my 12-year-old brain could handle. But even as Aliens and Predators danced in my head, deep down I knew what Mike Harrigan was going to say. I'm too old for this shit. So in honor of the lieutenant's hard work, today we're going to take a look at five video games that are secretly connected. By most accounts, these games have nothing to do with each other, but a closer examination reveals secret ties that suggest they exist in the same universe. This is Bionic Commando, a game in which Nathan Rad Spencer fights his way through countless enemy bases with little more than a gun and a bionic arm. His goal is to kill Hitler and rescue Super Joe. What you may not know is that by the time Bionic Commando rolled around, Super Joe had already been a star in not one, but two classic arcade games. Everybody remembers Commando, but between his military service and the POW status, Super Joe made plenty of noise and speed rumbler. With an intoxicating mix of vehicular combat and overhead shooting, Speed Rumbler was one of Capcom's early hits. But few realize that this comes only a few years before the events of Bionic Commando. And if you want to go one step further, Bionic Commando can be tied back to yet another Capcom arcade game, UN Squadron. As you can tell from this side-by-side -side shot, both games buy their supply trucks from the same company. Poor Lolo. His adventures always start with his girlfriend getting kidnapped. Well, not the third game. The Lala's constant nagging led to future installments being nixed in North America. The Adventures of Lolo trilogy proved to be an engaging series of puzzle games that captured the hearts of NES owners and the praise of critics. But despite strong reviews, Lolo and Lala have been missing in action for more than two decades. Or have they? As it turns out, both Lolo and Lala did not take the cancellation kindly. After spending years out of the limelight, the two rotund mascot characters challenge yet another HAL creation, Kirby. In Kirby's Avalanche, Lolo and Lala show up as the ninth boss. They've added another syllable to their names, making for an even more redundant Lololo and La La La. But make no mistake, these are the same two characters that took on King Egger and regained order to Eden Land. Kirby even acknowledges this connection, noting that the two have a amazing skills to make it this far. Now that we've had a Kirby racing game, golf game, Poyo Poyo clone, and pinball simulator, perhaps it's time Hal go back to their roots and return to the adventures of Lolo. Let's face it, the Street Fighter universe runs deep over a Capcom. Somehow the company has been able to link Ryu, Ken, and the rest of the world warriors to everything from Final Fight, to Strider, to the King of Fighters, to the X-Men, to Tekken. The list goes on and on. But while Guile fighting Wolverine sounds improbable, it's not outside the realm of plausible. It wouldn't take much to figure out a fun conceit for why M. Bison is going head-to-head -head with Gambit, or why Iron Man absolutely must shoot a missile at Blanca's face. The Street Fighter timeline becomes a little blurry when you find Chun-Li hanging around in Breath of Fire. How could this 20-something pugilist be alive hundreds, nay thousands of years ago when valiant swordsmen were battling dragons? Is Chun-Li a vampire? Was she summoned by this magician? I'm sure all of this is explained in some semi-pornographic fan fiction, but I'm too afraid to check. Apparently, enough people took time out of their joyless life to ask Rare for a new Killer Instinct game. I'm not sure who these people are, but apparently Microsoft believes there's enough of them to warrant a reboot on the Xbox One. Then again, Microsoft thought they could get away with onerous DRM that would cripple the used game market, so maybe we shouldn't put much stock in their judgment. Either way, a few people are reportedly excited about Killer Instinct making a comeback. 
But did you know that one of the KI characters is from a Commodore 64 game that dates back to 1985? Want to guess which one? No? Alright, I'll tell you, it's Saberwolf. Developed by Ultimate Software, the company that would later become Rare, Saberwolf was a top-down action game that involved a brave hero on a quest to kill the dreaded Saberwolf. Okay, so it's not exactly Inception, but it does suggest a universe that is much, much more exciting than Killer Instinct. Contra Rocket Knight Adventures Metal Gear Solid Castlevania The Mystical Ninja These are just some of Konami's most beloved franchises. Now what would you say if I told you that all of these disparate games and characters live in the same universe? You'd think I was mad. There's no way that Simon Belmont is battling Dracula at the same time that Sparkster is fighting against Axel Gear. But it's true. All of these characters coexist in the same universe. Not only do they exist in the same world, but they hang out at the same bar. Here's one of the more memorable moments in Snatcher, involving Bill, Lance, Sparkster, Simon, Dracula, and Goemon, all taking a time out at the Outer Heaven Strip Club. It's a touching reminder that despite their different backgrounds and tendencies towards wanton violence, these Konami characters can get along, even if it's only long enough to objectify the woman on stage. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe!